So IP rights or intellectual property rights are incredibly important for businesses to have, not only just for creative industries, but if you make a product, you want to, you know, copy your, your intellectual trademark, or maybe you want to say, I made my business, made this special design so no one else can make it unless I give them license to, et cetera, et cetera. The world of IP rights and these types of things is very, very uh, complicated, but very, very much so needed to be able to protect smaller companies from being exploited by much bigger companies. Uh, just going, oh, that's actually a really good idea. Yoink. Because that's what would essentially happen if you allowed this. And in fact, I'm not sure we've told this story before, but the story of China. When Western companies started exporting to China initially, big designer brands started complaining about the lack of no IP rights in China because all their designs and et cetera were being ripped off by all these Chinese companies. Well, now fast forward to, well, today, and those brands that started in China ripping off Western companies now have their own brands, their own um designs that they now want to start exporting to other countries. But because China refuses to sign up to international copyright rules and laws, and especially things with like intellectual property, it is now having a, a case where its own designers, brands, etc. don't have that protection that they would in another country and are now trying to get the Chinese government to sign up to these types of rules. So they are incredibly important around the world and globally so. And unfortunately, it seems here that Kimi Badnock, uh, desperate to once again try and reapprove her Brexit credentials because she's upset a lot, and I mean a lot of Brexiteers just in the past couple of weeks from her refusing to be a Brexit arsonist in a very heated commons, or, or sorry, a very heated committee discussion, shall we say. She's dropped the 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 burning of those 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 goods, checks, and regulations. She's extended the regulations again of those checks at the border for a fifth time. They've even dropped the UK's CE mark, retaining the European safety mark check. So she is desperate to try and prove her Brexit credentials. And now it seems she is trying to root around to try and find anything, anything that is possible to try and sell it or at least spin it as a Brexit dividend. And it seems that creative industries are now ringing the alarm saying that Kimi Badnock is going to make changes to IP rights that would threaten their entire industries. And this could have huge consequences, once again, for all our creative industries here in the UK. But it's going to be sold as a Brexit dividend. So let's find out what nonsense Kimi Batnock once again is trying to sell, or at least trying to do, and sell it as a Brexit dividend. Because she really, really needs to try and protect her job. Because we highly suspect, possibly soon, there is going to be a cabinet reshuffle. And certainly, she's one of the names that might be, shall we say, shuffled out of the cabinet because she has upset so many right-wingers in the party. So let's see what crazy plans that she has to do, which will probably, again, have to have a massive climb down or just quietly drop if we don't end up covering this again. So before we do uh, go jumping into this, please do remember... Uh, to uh, click on the like, share, and subscribe button if you are new to the channel. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page, the one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can buy me coffee. There is the Pony Club, and of course, the YouTube thank you button as well. And thank you very much to everyone who does support the channel that way. Even if you do, just click on the like and share button. Like I say, it all helps. So let's crack on over onto this. So the title of this is Creative Industries Warn that IP Rights Are Under Threat by a Hunt for Brexit Dividends. British intellectual property rights are under threat from a government review searching for potential Brexit dividends, warns the creative industries, executives and business groups. 
Business Secretary Kimi Badnock is considering whether to push for reforms to the regime around the so-called exhaustion of IP rights in the UK, and according to multiple industry and government sources. These IP rules prevent UK-made products such as books, toys, clothes, uh, clothes and pharmaceuticals that have been sold abroad at lower prices in line with the local market conditions from being resold uh, uh, resold at that discount in Britain. When the rights are exhausted, there is, of course, a danger that a new parallel market will develop. And, of course, this threat to the current IP regime has now sparked fears in the creative industries that there could be a glut of cheap copycat products undercutting prices in the UK. And this isn't the first time we have seen this problem crop up, by the way. Uh, IP rights, intellectual property rights, copyright has been a continuing problem throughout Brexit. Throughout this Brexit debate, it has been a constant undercurrent that has been almost ignored by the Tories, partly because it is very, very, it is a very he heavily regulated international area. And if we did really want to change some of this, a lot of this stuff would mean, of course, having to negotiate with the EU um, amongst other countries, and it would not really go well for us. So there is a very, very big um, hesitation by the Tory party to actually really get into, shall we say, the weeds of, of this conversation, because these uh, type of conversations, a lot of them is very, very legal. They were all very much bound up in, in contracts and rules and all kinds of regulations. So it would be incredibly difficult to really make any significant changes. But Kimmy Badnock here seems to be really trying to go and do that. But so back to it. So one leading executive in this sector has said that the government was using the same issue to demonstrate Brexit dividends with some right-wing politicians seeking to benefit in forcing down prices by opening up UK markets to imports. Once again, they do not understand what this would do to British industries. If you decide to go, oh yes, we're going to force down prices and then open up the UK markets to cheaper imports, which is what these IP rule changes are designed to do, which Again, for the free market fundamentalists is their dream come true. This is what they want to do and, and achieve. Uh, we're going to import everything instead rather than make everything here. Of course, what then happens to all the jobs in the UK if you decide to do that? You know, no uh, real thinking about that whatsoever. He also added that this would hurt British industry, as we've just said. Before Brexit, the UK was part of the EU's regional rights regime which prevented goods from outside the European economic area entering its market without right holders' consents. When Britain left the, walk, the block, the IP rules were retained, and the UK regime was subject to a consultation back in 2021 when Kersey Kwatang was the business secretary, but ministers could not come to a decision. The Publishers Association has forecast that the changes to IP rights would cause a loss of up to 2.2 billion pounds in the publishing industry. 2.2 billion pounds in the publishing industry. And bear in mind, as they point out here, as well as this would decentivize the UK's export market, because what they're saying here is... According to the Tories, yeah, we want everyone to export more, start exporting more. Well, if you take away these IP rules, as has been said here, there is nothing stopping someone in a foreign country when those rights get exhausted of copying your IP and then reselling it back into the UK at a lower price. That would be incredibly damaging to any business that that might happen to. And once again, it is the government saying we want everyone to export, but doing the exact opposite, making it even less attractive and harder for UK companies to actually export. Something that they apparently want everyone to do and was meant to be a big Brexit benefit 
but have done nothing but continuously mess it up every single time. It's again, so much for Global Britain. So the British Chamber of Commerce have called on the government to retain the existing regime, noting that more than half of the respondents to a government consultation have argued for keeping the same approach as used before Brexit. Once again, what was the point of Brexit? Every single time you come up with situations like this, be it a, a different situation, it's almost always exactly the same. Businesses come back around and said, no, please keep it. <laughs> don't, don't change it. But the levers, well, the levers were always telling us, oh no, businesses want to change. They, they want to change this. But every single time this has come up, they're always like, no, keep it, please. <laughs> anyway, changing this position could lead to additional companies and verification costs for small and medium-sized businesses, and it would favor the retention of the existing approach to IP exhaustion, said William Brain, the, B the British Chamber of Commerce Head of Trade Policy. The pharmaceutical industry has also warned that relaxing the rules around IP exhaustion would risk med medicines being diverted from lower-income countries to the UK, where they can be sold by distributors at higher prices. The industry has also been concerned about the price uh, pressure placed on a UK regulator to try and curb the risk of substandard pharmaceutical products entering the UK supply chain. We could potentially see medicines of differing standards leaking into the UK supply chain. So yet another significant concern we should be worried about if they decide to mess with these things. Fantastic making it more difficult for pharmaceuticals, for pharmaceutical companies to safeguard the supply to UK patients. And of course, it would add more pressure on the safety regulator, Claire Michonne said, the executive director of the Association of the British Pharmaceutical Industry, the trade body for, uh, lead, uh, for, for leading drug makers. She also added that the profits from reselling medicines back into the UK would accrue to distributors rather than to the companies investing in the IP behind the drugs deterring investment. So yet again, another big um, hit to, to UK companies. Like I say, every single time we, we hear about these changes that they want to make to, to things like regulations or anything like that, businesses are always saying the same thing. Please don't change it. Please don't do that. If not, it will lead to the damaging of our industry and to less investment in the UK. It's the exact, exact opposite of what the levers promised would happen if we could choose our own regulatory path. So Steve Elliott, the chief executive of the Chemicals Industry Association, a trade body, said that any reforms should not lead to a reduction in the length of potential patent protections, which were important for protecting investment in product development. He also urged ministers to take a collaborative approach with other jurisdictions. It is much better when countries work together on legislative matters, which is why we are keen to work alongside the European Union and other areas of the world to ensure uh, the safe production and use of chemicals, he added. Uh, yeah, again, what was the point of Brexit? What was the point? Um always hear this, especially the chemical industry. Remember, there was only one guy. There are six chemical companies in the UK, and there was one guy that was very, very pro-Brexit. And he had the largest body, but he has been used by people like Jacob Rees-Mogg and all these other pro-Brexiteers to say, oh yeah, the chemical industry wants out of the EU. It was one guy who owned one chemical company in the UK. And yet, every single time things like this have come up, especially around the chemical industry, they have unanimously said, do not change these, do not do anything like this, because it will damage our relationship with Europe, which is our biggest trading partner. It will negatively affect the UK economy. Every single time. 
every single time. And this was part of the problem we really saw during the referendum because British businesses have been were always, even before that, although to be honest, I would hope it would change, British businesses have always been very, very quiet about getting involved in politics. They don't really want to get involved in politics. Even if something good or bad, they tend to only really get involved if they get asked. They don't actively go out and, and say, hey, this change is going to be bad. That is normally left up to industry bodies like this or the British Chamber of Commerce who speak on their behalf. But businesses themselves don't tend to. And I would hope in this post-Brexit world that we find ourselves in, because if businesses had really spoken up during the 2016 referendum and openly said, this is going to be bad for our industry, it is going to be bad for our business, it is going to be bad for the UK economy as a whole, don't think Brexit would have happened. And when all these levers were coming out and saying, oh, no, you don't understand, businesses are behind us. They used that. They used that cover knowing full well that businesses would not speak out. And yet, post-Brexit, we have constantly heard every single business, all these big business groups come out and say, do not check, make any changes. Stick, follow the same path as Europe, please. Because if you do, it will hurt our industry. It will hurt our economy. Every single time. Of course, what did the government spokesperson uh, have to say about this? He said, we are considering all options for the future exhaustion of intellectual property rights following the UK's departure from the EU and will announce our decision in due course. If there is this amount of significant pushback, I highly suspect, highly suspect this will once again something that will be just dropped. Kimi Badnock has shown that if businesses hate enough what she is proposing, they will drop it. Otherwise, uh, Labour can make a, a big case, an issue that you, you've made this stupid change that is meant to be a big Brexit dividend, dividend, but actually you're not. You're harming the economy. Again, it's not a good look going into a general election, and they know it. So tampering at the moment, is this is why we're seeing this stuff, because they're looking for anything they possibly can to spin as a Brexit dividend. We saw last week the whole... Um, rule changes around alcohol. While it has favoured some alcoholic drinks, others have been heavily punished for doing so. It has made the whole thing incredibly hard for companies, and it is continuing like this because, as we've always said, Brexiteers have no idea, no clue what they are doing, no idea with the reality of what they are interfering with. Instead, they are all following this ideology, which, according to their ideology, if you do this, everything's all fine. Everything's all fine, fantastic, and should be wonderful. But as we saw when Liz Truss, currently the only one who really seriously dabbled in doing this, she almost crashed the economy, destroyed the UK pensions industry, which would have had massive ripple effects throughout all the UK economy. Because pensions industry and funds in the UK heavily invest into all sorts of areas in the UK. And if they'd started calling in their debts, that could have that could have really triggered a massive collapse. That's why the Bank of England hadn't stepped in when it had done. If you think things are bad now because of Liz Truss's mini budget, they could have been infinitely worse. So, so much more infinitely worse. We'd be in a far worse position, I can guarantee you that. So that's why you still do not want these types of people in this in these positions because Kimmy Badnock is going, well, we don't want to be seen as bad as as trust because we've seen what what would happen. But they're still wanting to mess with this stuff because they still want Brexit dividends. And yet, every single company here, all these different businesses from 
all different types of sectors we've seen from creative industries. We saw the book publishing industry, the British Chamber of Commerce, the chemical industry, all say here, please do not mess with these regulations. Keep them as they are. And what is this in favor of? It's in favor of trying to get more cheaper imports to come into the UK. Because they do not understand this concept of if you allow cheaper imports into the UK, what happens to your UK base, your manufacturing base, your creative industry base, all these industries that make stuff here? What happens to them? Yes, they face competition. But then what if that competition ends up taking out the, the UK chemical industry or the um, many other industries? Part of the reason, by the way, this is yet another fascinating historical tidbit. So Britain did not have a chemical industry prior to World War I, where a lot of other companies had chemical industries. Why was that? Well, two things. First of all, Britain loved to import these, these chemicals. It didn't really see the need to have this industry in its own country because it could import them, mainly, of course, from Germany. And it also did used to have chemical industries. However, these industries went completely belly up because they could not fight against the import of chemicals, especially coming in from Germany. And thus, we ended up with no chemical industry at all prior to World War I because businesses or the startup chemical companies could just not compete. And that's why we didn't have an industry like that. That is... And, and again, all these six companies are actually the descendants of the 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 armaments industry that happened because of World War One. It's the only reason they exist because the government put massive funding into creating these industries, into creating a chemical industry in the UK. So there are always consequences. Um, and again, the amount of jobs the, the chemical industry would, would provide here in the UK, if 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 you, if you just went no chemical industry, I, I I dread to think the amount of jobs you would lose. Not only that, around the other industries as well that help supply the, the, those industries and all kinds of stuff that would happen, the ripple effects would be insane. But this is this is the kind of thing that they they continually tamper in without really understanding about what it would do to here. They, they are just obsessed with this idea, you bring in cheap imports and somehow that's fine. No, what about your businesses here in the UK? And this is why protectionism, they try to make it a, a dirty word. But in reality, protectionism protects UK businesses and UK industry. It's not a dirty word. It's not a bad word. And some protectionism can be pretty good for economies because it protects your manufacturing base. It protects your industries here in the UK. That these free market fundamentalists are like, there should be no protectionism, no regulations, no government involvement in the market whatsoever. And they are still, as you can see here, following on with that ideology. Desperate desperate to try and prove that there is some sort of Brexit dividend. So, as always, thank you very much for watching, and of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.